So, what is architecture? It's a simple question. <laughs> Different answers, but uh, for me, it's a, it's an obsession. It's an obsession that I've had since the time I was six years old. I built a, this enormous model of a football stadium. I suppose it's kind of what was sort of a fantasy. I don't know, uh, a way of looking to, to house something that I liked. I don't know what the initial uh, thing is as a child. It, it all started for me at that point and it's an obsession. I think it's necessary to go through this entire process of being of architecture and all the ups and downs and this and that. Um, it's important to have this sort of drive or this, this obsessive quality. Obviously, uh, like uh, Philip Johnson said, I hate vacations. If you can build a building, why should I sit on the beach? Right? It's, a, it's this kind of passion that's connected to it. And uh, it's one aspect of it that actually, to, to try to define ar architecture in a broader sense, uh, the theoretical side of architecture, what it is, it may take a, a bit more time. I try to con condense my answer into a small package. Um, it has, uh, I think in its core, it has some, uh, it's a search to create spaces that have the poten potential of uh, making some kind of metaphysical um, situation that has to do with light and, and space and uh, uh, quality of space to make that sort of uh, feelable or realizable in, 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 within a space. It's a kind of, uh, on one hand, it's this kind of uh, perhaps the spiritual aspect of the architecture. Uh, obviously, it has a lot of practical issues. Uh, Charles Eames said it's an overlay, overlay, overlapping of interests and concerns of, of the client, interests and concerns socially. Uh, interests and concerns of the designer, and 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 the, the list is endless, um, and yeah. But in general, uh, it's an organization of space, it's a creating of places, uh, places to be, places uh, that have different qualities. You know, is it a, is it an apartment building? Is it an, uh, a museum? Is it an office building? So they all have special qualities, but. I think primarily, as I said at the beginning, I think for me, it's always looking through this, out this entire process for some kind of uh, uh, space that can transcend that, can tra transcend the practicalities that are connected with the, the, the fact of being an architect and what we do. So you already started to answer the second question, what can architecture do, it can create this. Yes, what can architecture do? It can do a lot, theoretically. It, uh, it can also be a, a simple generic space that doesn't do anything. It waits for the users to take over and do something. I think the user incorporation and integration of the user's input into the, the use of the architecture is very significant and important. It allows uh, reality to come into the project. It allows the uh, the project to live in all of its contradictions and uh, I think that's uh, an important aspect to take into consideration. I mean we have as architecture, we, it's a cool, it's a, what can architecture do, yeah. It's, it's an, it's an uh, inanimate object, it can't really do anything, right, but uh, I mean what you can do in, in an architecture is perhaps another uh, more interesting question, but uh, I think it, the, the, the fact of, of, its, of its existence, its space forming quality, when you walk around a uh, town, it's all, it's omnipresent in, in the entire world. Um, and uh, it does affect the way we live and the way we feel about how we live. So, um, I think it can also tell stories. Like, uh, in, a, in a way, I think it is a, it's a communicative uh, tool, like I said uh, in the, to the first answer. You know, is it a is it an apartment building? Is it an office building? Is it a museum? Or this and that. This is a communication aspect of the, the architecture. 
and uh, I think it should be readable, I think it should be accessible, I think that uh, for uh, anyone walking around, uh, I don't, don't think you should, you have to be an architect to understand architecture, I think it should be that simple to, to grasp what, what, what we're trying to do. And to experience, you know, it's about an experience. It's about creating an atmosphere of that's uh, particular to its function and its uh, its uh, time as well. Um, what is your architectural position? Uh, sitting at the drawing board, building models, talking to clients. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, doing lectures, talking to students. No, but uh, yeah, I think I, I, I started to talk about the position uh, already, and uh, it's, uh, it's for me, it's always been about uh, looking for this, this special uh, moment. I mean, architecture is a, is a, is a coordination, a composition of so many different uh, interests and elements. Um, and concerns, be it technical, be it uh, functional or atmospheric or, or, or narrative, whatever the case may be, you know, we're working with walls, ceilings, uh, columns and, and, and windows, and these are, are sort of uh, the elements we have to work with, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a game of mind over matter, you know, it's, a, it's sort of like Dan Graham said, it's a speculative realis, realis, uh, realism. Um, in a sense, we're speculating on something that could perhaps become real uh, and trying to uh, transform these ideas into, you know, through, through these simple elements that we have at our, at our, at our means, you know, walls, ceilings, windows. That sort of thing. It's very simple. It's basic. It's building. You know. I mean, it's a, it's a house. What's the difference between building and architecture? Is perhaps the, the real question. Were there some uh, important uh, teachers or architects reference building in your becoming an architect? Yeah. Um, obviously, um, Stanley Tigerman was a, 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 probably one of the key influences in in my. Uh, Perception in my education as an architect, um, coincidentally and, and uh, uh, happily, he uh, his time at the U the university in Chicago where I studied and, and my time at the university were exactly uh, overlapped each other exactly and uh, that was an exciting time. Um, Tigerman is very energetic and enthusiastic about the field, but he also brought and uh, a pluralism. He was teaching pluralism, and I think that was uh, for me a unique experience. You know? and, uh, the idea of studying with Thomas Gordon Smith and having to draw uh, classical columns with uh, Chinese ink and, and uh, on watercolor paper to uh, uh, sitting in uh, lectures with Eisenman or, or, or Liebeskind at the same time or, or hardcore modernists like uh, uh, Ed Deem or some guys like that. that was, this was a, a completely pluralistic, uh, contradictory environment in the, in that we studied. And I think that that's a, to me a, was a good reflection of the world we live in. You know, I think it, it, it wasn't ideological at all. It was it was contradictory. It was one semester we had to draw columns. Next semester we're dealing with philo taking philosophy courses uh, from Derrida, and um, that formed my my approach. Because at the end of the day, each each project dealing and, and intensely with these different sort of styles. Uh, at some point, you have to come to the conclusion that it's not about style. Architecture is not about style at all. It's about a, a deeper laying a basis uh, of uh, an abstraction of a, of, a, of, a, uh, of a philosophical point of view. And however the, the, the expression of that view is, is, is another question. Hopefully it comes out of this, this basis of, of analysis and, uh, 
and obviously the goal to, to create space is that it's that uh, appropriate and uh, fantastic, right? Uh, that was also a big uh, influence so from Tigerman, and this demanding to do fantastic architecture, regardless of what style or direction or what your, your point of view was, but to, you know, to really, um, to do it as good as, as, as humanly, humanly possible. And I think that was fitting for me in, to, in, in the sense of my obsession with, with, with the field of architecture and the, the, the idea of architecture was uh, a good fit to his demands and his expectations. And um, that was an amazing, uh, fantastic time for my life and, basically, and, and set the, the ground stone for all of my future uh, endeavors. Um, can you tell us something about your design method? My design method, yeah. Do you have one design method? Well, sometimes it's uh, quick and dirty, sometimes it's uh, long and deliberate and at times difficult. Um, but uh, generally the method is, is to, uh, let's say, start by trying to understand the content. That's, that's the starting point, which I, I think is uh, necessary as a, as a way, not starting to think about uh, what is the coolest window I can do, or the coolest form, or whatever. It's, it's not about that. Uh, that comes later. You know? It's about understanding what is the problem, what is the, the situation, what is the context, where is the building coming, in what time are we building, this sort of thing, to understand and grasp the social aspects of the time we live in, the building cap capabilities we have, but also the core, the core of the, the, the task. And I think as soon as you, and if you have a, a solid understanding of that, you can start to question how, you know, why, why is it, why, why do you want this building, you know, what do you want, why do you want to, why does it have to be so big, or, you know, what is the programmatic sequence of events, it's just the next step, a, l a later step, let's say, the next step would be after understanding um, the content is to uh, reinterpret the content and I think out of this reinterpretation process to generate a kind of a syntax, a kind of a language that's not visual, not necessarily visual, not necessarily, uh, absolutely not architectural. You know, I think the process, the whole, my, my method is to try to avoid preconception, to, to open the field, because I think preconception uh, uh, in, in, in the development process limits you in terms of what could possibly happen in the design process. I think as soon as you say, I know at the beginning, I'm the, you know, I know at the beginning what it looks like, you already uh, you eliminate uh, millions of possibilities. So my, one of the, the main objectives is, is to, to el eliminate the preconception, to keep, the, to keep the, the visual aspect of architecture open until a point where it sort of manifests itself out of the process. Um, after generating a sort of uh, a textual uh, um, syntax or, or, or description of, uh, or interpretation of the content, on the, on the understanding the content, I think then it's important to get into a sort of graphic uh, uh, interpretation of the, of the, 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 the textual uh, syntax and to use that as a, as a tool which is also not architecture yet, it's, it's just a, a, a sort of means of saying uh, we start to sort of define space or sketch out uh, what, it, what it could be as a kind of form, interpretation, abstraction of the of the main uh, idea that's starting to generate. Right? So always keep pushing this preconception as far away as possible. Obviously we're visual people, architects, uh, walking around, you know, the most favorite thing we do while, while I'm driving anyway is to look at all the buildings around, which is a little difficult for the person riding with me. But uh, um, try, let's try to sort of like put that on hold for a while and carry on with the, the thinking and trans, uh, the abstraction of an idea into uh, a sort of graphic representation of that. 
taking this graph of representation to the next step, transforming that into architecture, has something to do with organization, in a way, in a banal organization. You have a, lot, a series of rooms. So then we get into a sort of narrative aspect of it, where you can say, okay, what is the story you're telling with these rooms? You know, with the, each room has a theme, and uh, each space, a sequence of events. How do you approach the building? How do you understand the building? And that sort of thing. It has to do with the sequence of events and the functions, and that has to do with the path through the building, which is also the important aspect, uh, uh, which has been become uh, in my uh, perception of architecture even stronger since I've uh, st uh, been with uh, Holzer Kobler architecture, architecture, and, and we've been thinking about uh, this idea of uh, scenography and exhibition design. This is very content oriented. It's very oriented around the the path through the exhibition, and uh, this mixes it, it. It mixes in with this idea of architecture, this path through the building, or the, the approach to the building. It's kind of Qing in a way. It's kind of this very simple basics of architecture. But I think uh, if you want to talk about a method, it's it, 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 there is this sort of like a possible structure, a possible way from a blank piece of paper to a finished building. Um, once you sort of start to organize these, these forms along the, these, these boxes or spaces along this, this, this shape, this about shape, the spaces are shaped from exterior external influences, from internal influences, and it, 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 it starts to become a back and forth, external, in, internal, and then to be always looking and questioning and looking to find something that starts to unfold and uh, Manifest itself as a as a kind of uh, visual architecture at that point, and so then you're into a kind of a you, then you you're, you're into a kind of a thing that becomes develops and starts to live from itself, lives from the idea, and becomes and then it's possible to become surprised and to have an architecture that develops out of that which one had, hadn't at the beginning expected in oneself. And I think that's important, to let the, in the content and the context and all of these influences, uh, these overlapping of all these influences sort of drive the program and drive and, and develop the architecture almost from, from itself. You know? And me as an architect, I sort of see myself as sort of guiding this process a little bit and helping it along the way. Um, but, the idea is to try to keep the possibilities open as long as possible. To use this method, it's a method like any other method. I mean, all of the methods, uh, you know, it would be an illusion to say this is a method. If I do this each time the same way, I have a perfect building at the end. It's not like that at all. There's a, kind of, a, a lot of contradictions along the way, and I think contradictions and questioning and turning things upside down. This is all part of the process of trying to within the process of uh, uh, generating different perspectives of the same object. Uh, and uh, at least in this situation, I mean, now it's also called the architecture, and we work a lot in teamwork, and we, are, uh, we love questioning and re-questioning and turning things upside down, that sort of stuff. But through these tests, the, the architecture can crystallize into what, I, what could potentially be the, the, the best uh, answer for the, the problem at that time, you know, I mean, perhaps it has something in, in reflecting upon uh, the beginning, this idea, this obsession, it has something to, like uh, Camus said, he sits every day, sits down and writes for, for whatever, eight hours, of his night. and he's writing every day, he's, the, the big hope, his, uh, his driving uh, force behind his, his initiative to, to do this on a daily basis, uh, is to at some point in his life maybe to get a, a, a to put together a good sentence or a good book, and this is my driving force and part of my obsession in life. And the reason I, I, I do it on a daily basis it, it is my life is the chance that at some point I may be able to do a good building and that may one day a good building may come out of all this, and that's that's the my ambition.